Androids and abortions. What an interesting set of topics. A major Japanese cell phone company is no longer going to be receiving Android updates due to a new executive order. How does that work? How does an executive order affect commerce so drastically? Don't they need to pass a law to do that? How does the office of the president, I don't care who's in it, how does the office of the president have that much power? That's Congress not doing their job. Congress is in charge of commerce, not the president. Congress is in charge of making tariffs, not the president. And yet the president can somehow start a trade war. It doesn't matter if you like the president, it doesn't matter if you don't like the president. The fact of the matter is the office of the president has been given too much power because of the laws Congress has passed to allow him to simply write an executive order to change policy over the departments that he's been given complete control over. And Huawei is not the only company that's being affected by all this. I got a message from a company I do some consulting with that actually said, we have to cut ties with Huawei. We can't do business with them except under certain very specific situations that they have to get approval from the government for before they do it. It shouldn't be like this. I, the, the president is slowly becoming a king or a dictator. He gets indirectly elected by the people. Man, we'd be in a world of hurt if it wasn't. The left coast and the New York and all those heavily populated areas controlling everything. 95% of the landmass of the country would have no say. At least we still have some separation of powers, some, some things in place that prevent uh, our newly elected kings and or dictators, however you want to look at them, from taking complete control over everything. You pretty much have a recipe for corruption. Too much power in one person's hands is very corrupting what we like to call unrighteous dominion. You get a little bit of power and you start to exercise it unwisely and it goes to your head and you, you stop thinking about other people and start thinking about how you can make things the way you want them to be and completely forget about what anyone else wants. And that's, that's not fair for anybody. Not that life is fair or anything, but we can at least do some things to help keep the, the playing field level. Again, it's, it's going to push China and companies in China to do their own thing. To, it's going to compete with things that we're doing here in America, things that we used to help that company with. But when you, when you have a government that is stacking a hill up against everyone else, because they want to do things their way and they have have all this power gone to their head and they're paying absolutely no attention to all the people who are around them or all the holes they're creating to, to build up that hill. It's, you know, that's not what government should be for. The problem isn't, the, isn't that government isn't keeping the playing field level. The problem is that government is enabling some very massive hills to be built up across the playing field. And of course, with that new law in Georgia, outlawing abortions, basically, challenging Roe versus Wade, which, by the way, the status quo, I believe, is 26 weeks. Anything after 26 weeks, it's not allowed. I think unless there is a, th a medical threat to the, the would-be mother. Any reason why you'd want to have an abortion, whether it's rape or incest or medical problems, the vast majority of those will be realized within the first 26 weeks. It's, to me, it's, it's really a matter of protecting life. I am absolutely 100% pro-life. I believe in protecting life. I believe that that is one of the, the roles that government should play. And by that, I mean you're not just protecting the life of the mother, you're protecting the life of the child as well, right? Both of those lives matter. Both of those lives are important. You don't go off aborting a kid just because it's inconvenient. You don't ban abortions when the, there's obvious cases when the, the life, the livelihood, the, the mental stability of 
the mother is severely threatened, whatever it may be, there are legitimate reasons for an abortion. It's the life of the child somehow endangering the, the mother's life. It doesn't necessarily have to be that there's a, an obvious death coming. It could be that her mental stability is in question. It, even with some of these serious issues, I would strongly, 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 strongly recommend that you consider adoption. There are so many couples out there these days that cannot have kids that would love to adopt a child, that would love to have a child in their lives, would love to, to take a baby from someone who, who it isn't convenient for. Unless the would-be father is a rapist or a horrible person, he should have a say in it too. He, you know, it, you didn't have that child on your own, right? There's a, there's a guy there involved. He needs to be considered as well. If it was consensual and he wants the kid and you don't, let him have the kid. I really strongly believe that children are best served by having a good, strong female or feminine role model and a good, strong male or masculine role model in their life. And the best way to do that is in a family setting with a mother and a father. That doesn't always happen. And when that doesn't happen, we should look to our family, our extended families. We should look to you know, other options. It's so important for their, their development, for their social skills, for their confidence. Understanding how, how adults interact and solve problems together instead of just thinking, oh, problem. Eh, it didn't work out, throw away the relationship. That's that's not good for society. That's not good for kids to see that. And they will never have healthy relationships when they grow up if that's all they've ever seen. I hope this gives you something to think about. Leave me a comment. I'm sure I'll get plenty of disagreements down in the comments. I'm sure I can get lots of uh, hate and whatnot, but let's try to be peaceful. Let's try to be nice. Let's try to have a real discussion here and not just throw names and be mad at each other about this. There's going to be plenty of disagreement. Plenty of people always trying to push their agenda and their ideas on everybody else. Let's let's be civil. Let's give each other the, the benefit of the doubt until they start actually treading on our rights or the rights of the defenseless. Peace. I'm sure you've all heard that Hawaii. I don't even know how to pronounce it. 